So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up a path animation in Rhino. Uh, here you can see I have set up two different layers for my camera path and my target. Up here in the render tools, I'm going to come down to this little film snapshot icon and I'm going to click on that triangle to extend, expand the menu and I'm going to you can see as I hover over what they are, this is the fly through, but I'm going to pick the path animation. Um, it's asking for a curve or point. So I'm actually going to uh, escape out of that and I'm going to do that first. I'm going to make an, um, a curve. So it's going to project and I'm just going to kind of set up a path over um, based on where I want it to go through. Uh, so that seems pretty decent to me. I'm going to put that in my camera path layer. And then I'm actually just going to make a copy. I do that by holding the Alt Shift or the Alt key and dragging. And then I'm going to put that in my target layer. So we have these here. Uh, since that was projected down, I'm actually going to bring this up a little so that it's suspended in space and that's where your camera is going through. So. Let's do that again. Come up here, expand, select it. You could also type it in. The uh, it's called set path animation. So the first thing that it prompts you to do is to select the camera path, and that's our lavender color. And then it asks us to select our target path. So I'm going to select this pink one. What this is basically going to do is that it'll have the camera, and it'll as it goes through, it'll focus on that curve the entire time. So you can also do a point, you could do a curve that's any other shape, it can change um, in space however you want. So this pops up, number of frames, I have 30 just to uh, have something short, um, but if you're doing, for example, this depends, 30 frames per second, 60, um, that's where you kind of want to do some math and figure out if you want a five second clip how long you want that so if this is a 30 uh, frames per uh, second it would just get me one second uh, which is a bit too short file type here are the different options if you want to have a transparent background on your gif or animation you want to select png uh, because they are they support the alpha channel uh, which you need for that Capture method, you have different options here. Rendered viewport will show you what is, um, you know, what you typically see in the Rhino render viewport. If you want to see render preview, um, this will take a bit longer. Render full will take the longest, and that'll be doing full rendering for each frame. Um, but this one's usually pretty good just to get some kind of shading and material at, on that. Viewport is whichever viewport you want it to do so you'll see all four on there. If you change it, change the name, that should be reflected there. I want my perspective one so let's go ahead and do that one. And then just a name. I had this name set up already so I'll go with that. Um, making sure that the background is transparent. You can do that in a couple ways. Here in the rendering tab, uh, I can come down and I can click here, transparent background. So that should have done it the trick. Here in my perspective window, you don't see any changes. So I like to make sure, come into properties and make sure that there isn't an override on that. So let's wait for that pop-up to come. Here we go. Uh, this will usually be down here under view. You want to expand that into the display modes. So the display mode on this one. Um, and so I'm going to come in here and see what's going on. Background, it says use rendered settings. I'm just going to go ahead and say transparent, override anything that's going on there. And now you see you have your checkered in the back, which means it is transparent. So... Um, here you can also change different settings if you want a ground plane. Um, I would keep that off if you want it transparent. And different 
shadows, curves, all of that there. Uh, one thing to know, I always keep show curves and show points uh, checked off so that these curved paths don't show up. Alternatively, you could just turn off the layer where they're um, located on and you won't be able to see that. So here's all this good stuff for lighting, ambient color, etc. And then if you expand it and you can go into shadows, you can start playing with some of that there. Um, so let's go ahead and exit out. Here's our scene. The animation should still be set up, so I'm just going to come here, play, and you can see it kind of move through. So it went by really fast. Again, that's only the 30 frames that we have. So what I'm actually going to do, making sure that I'm clicked in on this perspective view, um, I'm going to type camera. And so I'm going to toggle it on. You can show hide, and you'll see it in all the other screens, what that camera looks like. So if you move it around, you can see it move. Um, and that's just helpful to see how the camera uh, responds and how it follows those paths. So I like to keep it on. Um, I'm also going to come down here and ch change the lens length to 20, um, which is more similar to human perception. 2015 is pretty good usually. Um, and so you see that change there. And so if I press play, you can kind of see how that moves around uh, on that lavender path following the... Or aimed at the pink one. Um, so that's set up. It should be transparent. Here on record animation, target folder, you can change that there. I have mine set up where I want it to be. Um, so it's just going to dump everything on there, frames, and it'll be named based off of what we uh, named it before. So my anim tutorial is what the title will be. Um, so I come here to record animation. Oh, that's already on there. Just press enter and you'll see it just kind of go through it and all of the images will be piling into that folder. So here you can see some of my tests run, but you can see some of them repopulate as they go through that. And so you just wait for it to finish should be pretty quick okay so that's then uh, just real quick want to show how you can also uh, focus on a point so I'll just put it at the end of that curve if I set up my path animation again, I'll select the lavender and I'll highlight that point. You can see it, uh, settings that I had before are fine. And if I press play, you can kind of see how that changes there um, as the camera goes through. So that's good to know. If you want to change the direction that the camera is traveling, for example, uh, you want it to start this way and it's kind of moving backwards. What you can do is that you can select that curve, type flip, and it'll flip the direction of that curve. So now if I press play, you see that going backwards. Um, and so that's helpful to know if you were to move this point. Let's see there, and we play. It'll stay there as well, so that's already been defined. Um, so just general knowledge of how these animations behave. Uh, one more, this one's pretty easy. This one's the fly through animation. You just select a path, same setup as before. And that path is both the target and the camera path. And the camera will record, um, kind of, you know, tan, I guess, is it tw facing towards the camera. So let's just play that and you can see that for yourself. Yeah. So it goes in the direction that that curve is going. And if I want to flip it so that it's in the opposite direction, you can see that there.
and that's how to set up a path animation in Rhino.